three degrees right now and my visor is totally fogged up. Ah, come on, get down. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lavi. And I'm Ollie. And this is our hero, Bumblebee. Together, we are attempting a Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by, by motorcycle. motorcycle. Join us for season three here in South America. So our situation at the moment is that our plate is really loose from the dirt road yesterday. <laughs> We're putting now tape over some bowls just to keep them not falling out again. DIY. <laughs> and also we just found out that our equipment is not working again, our audio equipment. So for the morning vlog, we were listening back to it and there was no sound. We are just now trying to dry it out a little bit and hoping that it works after. You know, we're taking one dirt road and <laughs> all our equipment is like on a blink to a break. <laughs> it's either got dust in it or it's got water in it. But either way, at the moment, it's not working. As you can see here in our tent, there was such a dust storm yesterday going on and it's like dust just everywhere in the tent. We couldn't uh, close our tent yesterday properly anymore. It was a little bit of a disaster. <laughs> As you can see now, it's so nice and calm and dry and sunny. So yeah, we are ready to take on another day. Look how dirty Bumblebee is now. Absolutely covered. And we just had her cleaned in Santiago. <sighs> Oh man. And if you look over here, you can see what we did yesterday to keep the mud guard attached. We have two cable ties on this side and two cable ties on this side. And luckily that was able to get us down the mountain yesterday. I can't feel my fingers. So yeah, that's not so good. And uh, we have to get that fixed pretty soon. Good morning world, welcome back to the channel. It's day number 301 on our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. So we're here in the Atacama Desert in Chile and we've been having quite a few issues this morning. Looks like our vlogging microphone, this little road one, uh, has completely stopped working. It's just crackling. But we tested the GoPro with our helmet mics and it seems to be working. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, everyone look at me. Yeah, it's extremely difficult to get any spare parts at the moment because we are not like close to a big city and also to ordering something is just impossible. So we're just doing the vlog on the phone. Yes. It's like our backup. So our first stop today is our most urgent stop and that is to see if we can find some new bolts for our mud guard to reattach that to Bumblebee. Then if all is good and the weather is good enough, we will be making the pass over to Argentina. So let me show you guys the route. So today, if all goes well, we'll be making our way back into San Pedro de Atacama before taking this road, the 27, up and over Paso Hama and into Argentina. We gotta pick up still everything and we have a long way to go. So better hit the road, let's go. All right. Look how deep the uh, kickstand is buried. And we have this like big givey plate on it as well to space it out. Whoa, because you want to help push me up. Whoa, God, it's sandy here. Ah, oh, Bumblebee, I'm glad that your engine is working anyway. Right. 
goodbye dusty desert camp man san pedro de atacama 15 kilometers down this road and then we'll find some bolts the worrying thing about it is that those two bolts which are now gone that hold the mud guard to the wheel those bolts were actually undone and done up by the mechanic that changed our front tire and that was like literally less than two weeks ago in Santiago so it does make you wonder 25,000 kilometers from England to Santiago no issues and then 100 kilometers of dirt road and both bolts are gone Mucho tornillo. <laughs> Oh, maybe uh, uh, this one here, maybe. Así como ese. Okay, un momento. Gracias, gracias. So I'm just here at a, a little mechanic here in town. He had like a big box full of bolts and um, I'm gonna try this little screw, see if that's gonna fit. Okay, so we looked online and um, found out that the bolts we need are exactly the same as these bolts in the front. So it's this bolt, we've taken it out. And um, actually the screw that I picked up from the mechanic, look at that, it's literally identical, which is crazy because I just picked it out of the box. I was like, oh, maybe that one. But that is actually going in, which is crazy. Wow. Yes, wow, okay. Should I try to get another one yeah. of those? Yeah. Yes, awesome. A second one. He actually had prepared a whole bunch for me when I came back. So that's really nice. But look, this is what we need. This is what he got. So let's try it out. Okay, no going back now. We are going to cut the cable ties and try these new bolts. We were actually debating whether to just stick with the cable ties. <laughs> we were like, oh, they seem to be working. Let's just carry on. But no, no, no. If we can get it sorted now, even better. Yes! Seems to be catching. Oh, yes! Amazing. What a good feeling. Perfect! Okay. I think for now that's going to be okay. Let's try the one on the other side. So we got the second one in, but we couldn't actually like turn the head. So he got out his, his cutter and cut a brand new head onto it. Cool! <laughs> which is crazy so let's try again i don't know i'm just like screwing it in and out it's sort of going in but not 100 percent. okay maybe get it out we had to put an extra couple of washers because we couldn't really get the screw in all the way but it's tight a good fix for now <laughs> we thought it'd be a good opportunity after that dirt road as well to give the chain a good brush put some new oil on there because this chain is also a new chain that we got in Santiago so we really don't want it breaking just yet okay yeah. okay awesome we just asked here at the police department in town if the border looked okay at the moment if there was a big storm up there or what was going on and he said in the afternoon it's not looking good but right now it's okay. So if you go right now, head over there, you should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it is already 11.30 and the storm is due to arrive at like uh, three or four. So <laughs> we have a small uh, window here, a weather window where we, yeah, where it looks promising. So now we have 96 miles to get to the border. And oh my God, yeah, you can see like how quickly the road is going up the elevation is coming literally straight away oh my god okay yep up 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 and away let's do it So we're just stopping to put on some more layers 
because we're already getting up high you can see down there the valley where we came from and you can feel the temperature dropping so fast hey totally it's time to put on all our layers <laughs> everything yeah. we have well look at this truck he has to keep his uh, engine completely open to keep it cool enough to get up the hill <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Outfits ready for the cold weather. Let's go. Well, we're definitely getting up high now already because the cloud line and the snow line is pretty much just above us now. And it's pretty crazy because today we're actually going to be climbing to the highest point we'll have ever been in our whole lives and by far the highest point of the trip so far to 4,831 meters above sea level and look we've reached the snow line <laughs> cool very cool yeah 4,831 meters is absolutely a crazy height to reach on this motorbike yeah you can feel the power as well from Bumblebee yeah yeah I've been full throttling her and yeah it's hard to gain too much speed even with a powerful motor like this whoa look at this crazy wow yeah we can only hope that we can get up and over this pass before the bad weather comes yeah wow look at that incredible incredible <sighs> yeah this is really the high andes mountains now pretty cool Look at this nice views ahead, hey? Oh, mountains, mountains, mountains. <laughs> the snowy Andy mountains. But yeah, the breathing is a little bit hard. I feel a little bit dizzy. I don't know how high we are up at the moment, but it is very high. Look, 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 look. Oh. There is some, I don't know, vikunas, I think. Hello. Hello. And he's standing on the stone. Oh. <laughs> Oh, like cute. it's not high enough for me i've got to get a little bit higher <laughs> they're so funny animals really so funny but yeah we have made an elevation of more than 2,000 meters in the space of like half an hour so our bodies are like whoa what's going on dude yeah where's all the oxygen gone <laughs> <laughs> i think we're still going up even further as well crazy oh, no. stuff whoa this is crazy high up here look at this giant giant ring of mountains of snowy mountains around us <sighs> nearly 4800 meters up now yeah wow yeah. out of breath completely <sighs> you stop you walk around for like 10 steps and you're out of breath <sighs> so you can see it's actually snowing just over there on that hill less than 500 meters from us and you can see around us these snow markers so you can see how high and how deep the snow gets up at this altitude we're actually starting to get a tiny bit of snow on us right now crazy absolutely crazy <laughs> now you know sometimes on a trip all the way around the world you get to roads like this and places that you just wouldn't see unless you're riding around the world it's days like today that make me like definitely definitely appreciate the journey we're on wow absolutely spectacular yeah it's always 50 50 because if you have any trouble with the bike you think like okay the trip might be over and you're really sad but then when everything is fixed up and you're back on the bike and then you have epic mountain views like this and you are then like oh man i really really enjoy everything even when we have sometimes a little bit of trouble or anything like this you know views like this and then experiences like this just make everything worthwhile absolutely still climbing this is absolutely crazy i don't exactly know where the highest point is 
but we must be getting really near to it. Look at all the snow. This is it. We've done it. 4,831 meters above sea level. The highest point of this road and literally one of the highest passes in the whole of South America. Wow, that's crazy. Time to eat some snow. Yes, look. We're here with the snow. Ah, yes. Ah, Woohoo. Bravo. Bravo. Bravo, Bumblebee. You did really well. Oh, man. This is really like the top of the world here. 4,831 meters. Back down, heading into Argentina then, hey? Let's do it! Oh my god, there is rain to the right of us and rain to the left of us so it definitely doesn't look like the weather's going to be getting better so it's definitely time for us to get to the border and get down the other side before this gets any worse Here we go Bienvenidos a la República Argentina and I can see the town of Hama down below and that's where the border crossing is that's where we got to do all the stuff yeah it's a very 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 beautiful border crossing this one here wow and look the town is like right on the edge of the rain cloud oh no <laughs> oh no this is the border post it looks like and we get to skip the truck queue Hola. Hola. Oh, in the office. Ah, whoops. Went past the border post. <laughs> Perfect. This is our new tradition, eating all of our fresh food at the border. We're trying to get rid of the rest of our goat's cheese. How much do we have left? This much. Not very much goat's cheese left. I think we're going to be able to finish it. Yes. And then after we've had our lunch, we'll go in, do the passport control, do the customs. Apparently both the Argentinian and Chilean is all in the one building. So you can pretty much just go window one, window two, window three, window four, and then that's it. We'll be in Argentina. We're officially in Argentina. Woo! And our first stop here is to get some cheap fuel from our good old friend YPF. <laughs> but I think every truck and everyone has the same idea. Do we have to wait with all of them? Surely not. Should I just skip to the front? Yeah, because these guys are all diesel anyway. So apparently they have no fuel here. Welcome to Argentina! <laughs> this is the same reason that we left Argentina to go to Chile in the first place. And then we come back here yeah. and the first petrol station we go to is like, oh, no fuel. They're currently filling up the fuel as we speak. So they reckon in one more hour we'll be able to fill up. But the next petrol station isn't for another 170 miles. So we just don't have that much in the tank. So we basically have to wait an hour. Success! We finally got our fuel and now we're ready to hit the road into Argentina but with all the delays and the border and everything it's already quarter past four so I reckon we can probably ride for another two, two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> nice Argentinian family that we met at the border. Let's see how far we can get. You! Let's pray for no rain. No rain. No, no rain. rain. No, no rain. rain. No, no rain. rain. Oh my god, guys. We just came around the corner and there is a huge herd of llamas. Oh, they're so cute. Wow. Oh, look, they decorate them with some stuff. No way. Oh, no, just park up. Just park up. Oh my god. <laughs> 
are so cute. What? Oh, this is like the most pretty thing I've ever seen, really. Wow. It, yeah, because they've all got these colored things on their ears. <laughs> yes. Wow, they are unbelievably cute. Oh, that looked like that they're going to a celebration. Oh, they do. Wow. Okay, it looks like we are finally getting hit with some rain. So we're gonna learn our lesson from yesterday and we're gonna unplug our microphones to try and save our GoPro. And boy, did the rain come. We were feeling pretty good with our preparation. We had passed the hammer border and expected to descend down into warmer and brighter weather at any moment. But little did we know that we would still be at over three and a half thousand meters elevation for the next 150 miles. As the evening began to approach, the temperature was dropping fast, but still, mile after mile, we had no choice, we had to keep riding. So it's now nearly seven o'clock, and it's absolutely freezing, and it's still wet, and still raining. I think the temperature at the moment is about six degrees. So we're stopping now to do some jumping jacks. And just try to warm up a little bit because we have to do another climb before we head down. We wanted to camp somewhere around here, but we're still like 3,800 meters up and it's absolutely freezing, windy and rainy. So we have to push through, we have to push through. I think we're gonna have to ride maybe for one more hour before we actually start getting down in elevation. At this point, we knew that camping wouldn't be an option, so we made the plan to ride to the first town we would encounter in Argentina, a small mountain town called Purmamarca, only 30 miles away, but in between us stood one more 4,200 meter pass to conquer, and this one would test us to our limits. Finally, after more than 10 hours riding since we left San Pedro de Atacama, signs of civilization started to emerge and we knew that our day's adventure was at last coming to an end. So we just arrived here in Purmamarca and uh, we're just seeing if there's any rooms that we can have and what the prices are gonna be. Yes. They do have a room for us and it's 2,500 per person, 
which is about 10 pounds per person. It's getting pretty dark already. It's nearly eight o'clock. Yes. So at this point, we don't have much of a choice but to take the room and uh, have a cozy bed for the night. Yes, oh, I'm super excited because I'm freezing cold. We made it, have been alive. Oh my God, I really thought we we're gonna die today. It was so freezing cold up there, like three degrees. Your fingers were nearly like I couldn't feel my off. fingers. I couldn't feel them. It was like ridiculous. It just carried on and on and on and just didn't descend. We were just waiting for it to go down. Like, and then we kept che checking on Maps Me and it was still like, no, we're still at three and a half thousand meters. And then we climbed up to nearly 4,000 meters again at the end. And then we couldn't see anything. It was like we were riding in a cloud. It was cold, it was no end in view, like it was just insane. So yeah. I'm really, really happy that we made it. <laughs> yeah, so this room is absolutely perfect for us right now. <laughs> this is what we need, a nice, cozy, warm room. Yeah after a lot of rain. I really thought that after the border, I thought that was it. You kind of go down after that and that would be done. And it was like, but no, it no. didn't. It just Continued. carried on and on and on for, I think it was like more than 250 miles today. More than 3000 meters elevation going through, through, through. It just never yeah. stopped. It was yeah. just insane. We're down at about two and a half thousand meters now. So the temperature has come up a bit and it is a lot warmer. And we will have a good night tonight. And that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below. And if you really, really, really like the video, then you can support us on Patreon. You find the link in the description below and we will see you next time.